Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm answering your homeschool questions. This question is, would love some advice on how to stick to the plan. Not rigidly, of course, but I find that we never end up completing any of the lessons slash unit study plans I make. I relate and I understand and usually I plan bigger than what I can accomplish. We do finally get to a lot of what we decide to do, but not everything and not as thoroughly as I hope. So I really relate to this question quite a bit. So if you are an over planner like me, and I don't mean the micro planning, I just mean that I want to do it all. I want to read all the books. I want to do all of the projects, all the hands-on projects, all the field trips. I want to do it all then I then <laughs> there's not enough time to do it all. If you're an over planner, then it's okay. You're not going to hit everything that you want to do in a unit. If you're struggling in other ways just to get to the bare minimum or just to get to what you feel good about in your homeschool, then we got to look at some of the other things going on in your life. So let's just take that you're not an over planner like me and that you're, you don't want to maximize everything in your homeschool. Let's just take that we're struggling just to get to what you feel good about on for yourself, for your goals. A part of the reason why I don't achieve my goals, even when I'm not over planning, it's partly to do with poor time management and a lack of a good routine and also um, undisciplined with my structure in my day. And sometimes it means that I am really just going with, with the flow without applying too much discipline to my time. So if I'm completely going with the flow, it might mean that I'm not really getting into homeschool until later in the afternoon. We're dragging our feet. We're we're allowing ourselves to be distracted along the way. And there aren't any solid deadlines that are kind of encouraging us to get through the work that we have planned. If this is where you're struggling, I also relate to you. And for someone who likes to go with the flow, like I do, I also have to impose some structure on my time. Now, if you're already a rigidly structured person, it might mean that you need to include some flexibility in your time. So the advice I'm giving is for someone who already can go with the flow with the day and is okay about letting some of the schoolwork go and rolling it over into the next day and the next day and finally the weekend and then abridging what you're doing just because you didn't end up having enough time. I'm speaking to you because that's my issue too. If you find that you're, you've been doing this too much, now a little bit obviously is okay, but if you find that you're doing this too much or too regularly or it's become your new habit, then it's time to rein things in and have a little bit more structure. For me, sometimes a good start time for the school day is a great way for me to get whatever I need to get done in the morning done so that I'm ready to start the school day at an appropriate time. Now this is different for every person and sometimes my start time for school School doesn't include active teaching because I just need a little bit more time just to decompress from getting everything done in the morning that might be a workout getting ready chores food any kind of food prep that might I might do in the morning for the rest of the day I just want a little bit of quiet time when we first start school so that might mean that I'm assigning some independent quiet work to my child to my student so that I have a little bit of time to just collect myself before we do any active teaching. It also might mean that I include something of a soft start for the morning or for whenever we start our school day that might include something like a game or independent journaling or making up work that we didn't do the day before so that I have a little bit more time to get into the active schooling of the day. So if this is where you're struggling, I really understand. And if you don't have any huge issues going on in your day, like you're caring for an elderly parent or you've got a young child or you're in the middle of a move, then it's a great time to solidify a schedule that's going to work for you. And if you're really not sure how to figure out what your schedule might be, you might pay attention to your energy levels throughout the day as well as when your children are naturally ready to get started with head work for you know head work is what I imagine like the the more intellectual work that you need to do for a day versus the passive work like say if you're reading aloud to your children and your children can kind of absorb that information more passively versus actively working on a lesson I think of math as being more head work and more active learning so you might want to pay attention to your children's energy levels, the things that they especially like to do versus the lessons they really don't like to do. And when you've collected enough data, then you can start to see where you can 
create a schedule and a structure that's going to work well for you. And if you're a little bit more on the go with the flow, it might mean doing um, a routine or a rough structure that includes blocks of time rather than smaller segments of time. So instead of saying we're going to start school at eight and we're going to work for an hour and do math, it might be we start school after breakfast and our first lesson is math. And that gives you a little bit more flexibility as you're working towards greater structure. I hope that answers your question. You can always leave questions in the comment as well, comment section as well.